to my channel and I'm going to be sharing with you my thoughts on these two books, Audrey of the Outback and the third one, Audrey's Big Secrets. Now I'm going to try to create, I'm going to try to make this as detailed as possible so this is, this is why it has its own video. I want to share with you anything that I, that might have been objectionable or that, um, you know, just all these thoughts. And then at the bit, at the end of this video I'm going to flip the camera around so you can kind of get a look at the inside, some of the illustrations and how the chapters are put um, about. As of right now, I have no idea how old Audrey is in these series, but I really think that, um, you know, I could see all of my kids really, really enjoying this series, especially as a read aloud or read on your own. My almost 11 year old daughter will devour this. Actually, she's 11. My 11 year old will devour this. And I know my five-year-old daughter will really enjoy her. But I really, um, it, it's kind of an outback Australian tale of this girl named Audrey with her older brother Prize, her younger brother, her little brother Dougie, and then in the third book her mom is pregnant again. But let's start with the first book, Audrey of the Outback. First of all, I've been trying to get this book for over a year. It's been in my Amazon cart and it keeps going out of print or out of stock, I guess, really quickly. And um, it retails for about $8 a book. But the second one, which is the one, as you can see, I don't have, and they do probably should be read in order. The second one um, is Audrey Goes to Town. And in the third book, it has like hints of what it's going to be about. And I'm going to, I can't wait to get my hands on it. But at the time of purchasing these two, the third one was like $15. And only the other day I went to just suck it up and pay the $15. And I found another um, seller that had it for $8. So they retail for about $8 a piece. So $25 for three books. And they are so worth it, in my opinion. So, like I said, Audrey of the Outback, that kind of tells you that you are going to get an Australian experience, right? Absolutely, and I want to say that it's within the 1920s, 30s, um, especially some of the illustrations um, kind of reflect that time period, and not just that, like, just stuff that you're hearing going on. It really made me think of that time period. Okay, so here's one of the illustrations, and you can kind of get an idea of the car, like I said, 1920s and 30s. Audrey is whimsical. Um, I think that was the other person I was trying to think of. She's kind of um, Laura Ingalls and Anne of Green Gables and just a whole lot of fun. She, again, I don't remember the age, but she kind of has her own idea of how life is going to be like. And in this book, she kind of starts off with that she is going to become um, this homeless person. They have actually a swaggy. Audrey decides after meeting um, another swaggy, which is what we would call like a hobo, um, she's going to be a swaggy. And um, she has a friend named Stumpy. And I'm going to get a little bit into that in a little bit. But um, so Stumpy kind of follows her and... Her mom, you know, she's like, I'm going to say goodbye, mom. I'm packing up. I'm going to leave. I'll miss you. And her mom is, I want to be her mom. Her mom is so brilliant. She knows the types of things that Audrey is. And she lets her kind of explore those ideas. Let her kind of figure things out for herself. But, like, she has boundaries. So one of the things that they talk about is, um, dad gummit, you know, something like that. And she, and her mother's like, you are not going to speak language. I mean, it, it wasn't as, as, it was something so mild, you know, it's not something that, you know, it's, you know, we, gosh darn it, you know, something so small. 
and her mom won't allow it. And so it kind of shows the kind of personality the mom is and her boundaries, but also just letting Audrey um, do these things. Like she's like, okay, well, if you're gonna go run away and be a swaggy, um, I'll miss you. Would you like to take some of my corn cake with you? Cause you'll never get this on the road. <laughs> Because it's just so far away. I mean, she has all these things. And, and what about this? Because you won't, you won't have a home. You won't have a shelter. You're going to be okay with this. And she just lets her figure these things out. And so Audrey goes from um, running far away. She's like, well, maybe I'll practice in the backyard. Just so that you can kind of get adjust me, adjusted to me going. And the first night, um, she's terrified. Like, it's dark and Stumpy's not answering. Stumpy's not talking to her. And all these types of things. And then she's just like, yep, yeah, nope, Swaggy's not for me. And then she picks up some other thing. Like, she's going to be a man then. And I actually think that's where the the language comes in. And she's going to be a man now. And she, she's done being a girl. She's going to be a boy. And do all the manly things. And they end up, like, blowing up a house. It's kind of funny. But um, speak, I'm going to speak of that. In the back of the book, you have a list of odd interesting words that the um, Australians use and what they mean and I loved it like fair dinkum is something that she always um, kind of says well fair dinkum and it means truth um, kick in the bushes go to the toilet using fresh air knuckle bones um, quandong rattler dogger um, dunny outside toilet they blow up the dunny that's the word I was trying to find out um, anyway, much more within this book, and to be honest, this one, I think, like, if you were to have anything that you, um, disagree with or anything, it would be, um, it wouldn't be in this one. It might, <laughs> it might be in this one, um, but I will share a little spoiler alert about this at this point. Um, you find out later, or maybe I missed it in the beginning, but Stumpy is a camel that only Audrey can see. It makes for a very interesting story. So again, I really love this. I can't wait to share with it. And then I read Audrey's Big Secret, which is the third in the, I don't know if you call it series, but they're just like little, little ones. They're only 165 pages. And in this one, her mother is pregnant and she, her, her personality is still there, but um, on the first night, again, I'm gonna be, I'm sharing everything that you might find objectionable. Um, the first night there, or the first night that kind of opens everything up, she ends up seeing like a white light and she's thinking, oh, this is a ghost, and she talks to her dad. She's like, is it the ghost of my two dead sisters that are coming back, and the dad, um, I love the conversations they have, and some of them, they don't align with our family beliefs. Here, I'll, I'll read this section so that you can get an idea. Do you think people could come back from the other side? The other side of what? The other side of being alive. Dad cleared his throat again. Do you think Pearl and Esther are alive somewhere, Dad, but different to us? I'm not sure, Audrey, but I miss them. Me too. I didn't know them really, but they are still my sisters, aren't they? So that means I do know them, even though I don't. Sort of. Dad scratches his beard. If people could visit from that other place, said Audrey, do you think Pearl and Esther would try to see us? If they could. Would you be scared? Of Pearl and Esther? Not on your life. Dad looked at her from under bushy eyebrows. Why are you asking me all these questions? I saw something out here last night, and it was sort of white, like an angel dress. You think an angel is out here? Maybe not. She'd get her dress dirty walking around in the bush, and if I was an angel with wings, I wouldn't walk. I'd fly really fly fast. That's a good point. Besides, if your sisters came back for a visit, I'd reckon they'd go in the house. They wouldn't stay out here by the chookyard. The chookyard smells, doesn't it, Dad? When people dilly-dally with their chores and then manure piles up, yes it does. Ad Audrey looked at the ground. People in this family do their chores. It just takes them a while sometimes. Mm hmm. Will you tell me more about Pearl and Esther? Reckon I will, said Dad, one day. And I just thought that was brilliant. Like, he handled that so well. Um, that's, that's my opinion. And so there's that. Um, later on you see a young Aborigine girl who ends up kind of sharing her story. 
and basically she was kidnapped from her mom to be taken as a slave and um there's a policeman after her and audrey's big secret is that this aborigine girl janet is hiding in her little out or her little hideout and so there's just a lot of things that she deals with and ends up it's janet the girl in the white dress that you saw everything has an explanation um janet is like her mom's calling her she's got to get back home janet ends up seeing the um, Stumpy the camel so I thought that was interesting and um, like they've the books never say that this is something real they've always just said your imagination can make it real kind of thing they've done that so well so this one um, I think really would be a little bit harder if you had certain um, viewpoints yes um, and I'm trying to like share everything that I could ever think about. One of the best lines that I'm gonna end this video, um, obviously showing the end, but I'm gonna end with the end of this book. And as of yet, I don't see any more, but I really hope that this author sees this video and writes more of these stories. <sighs> Mom, have you ever lied to me? If I say no straight out, that could be a lie, but I try not to tell, but I try not to lie. Do you tell me everything? asked Audrey. Not everything. Some thoughts in my mind are grown-up things. You knew I had a secret, didn't you, Mom? Mom. I suspected. Audrey reached out and helped Mom brush twigs and pebbles from the girl's grave. When Mom suspect, that means they know. You didn't ask me about my secret. I was waiting for you to decide what to do, said Mom. What if I decided wrong? If I made every choice for you, you wouldn't learn to make your own, and I trusted you to make the right one in the end. The hardest choices are not between right and wrong, but they are between two rights. Oh, and then there's a little bit more. I'm going to just kind of they play with the baby for a bit. There's a lot of secrets around here lately, but I know one thing that's not a secret. This is the best family in the whole, right to the edge across the big sea, including the Antarctic world. Stumpy thinks so too. Fair dinkum. So those are the Audrey series. I'm going to leave them linked down below as well as a blog post that I am going to be putting up with this. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Have you read these? I have no idea where I learned about them. I just know that I've had them in my cart forever wanting to get them. And so now I own them and I'm so excited to share these with my kids. I just really think they're going to enjoy them. And I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one.